Hever Castle in Kent has a fascinating and rich history. It was once owned by the famous Boleyn family, and after their downfall, by four of the Tudor monarchs. But Hever also has a more recent history of being a film set for some of the most popular films across the 20th and 21st century. This video will look at some of the 50 plus films, television dramas and documentaries that have been filmed at Hever. Not surprisingly, many of these centre around the Boleyn family and the ever fascinating Tudor era. However, there are some rather surprising additions too. I'm going to focus on a few of the films shot at Hever during the post-war period and show where in the castle and grounds they were filmed. Before we get into Hever's more glamorous post-war film history, let's take a look at one of the first films of Hever Castle to be shot in colour, which was taken in 1941. Astonishingly, this film entitled Britain at War is in brilliant colour and it documents the castle's wartime effort of housing many evacuees from London who were escaping the Blitz. It was shot and edited by Rosie Newman and included all aspects of life on the home front during the Second World War. It gives us a colourful glimpse into a very dark period of the castle's history. The first major film to be shot at Hever Castle was the Oscar-winning 1969 film Anne of the Thousand Days, which made extensive use of Hever Castle and its gardens as the home of the titular character Anne Boleyn. Producer Hal B. Wallace was keen to use authentic locations, and while there are numerous exterior shots of the castle, the flood of 1968 meant that most of the interior shots at Hever were recreated at Shepperton Studios. During the film shoot, Hever also played host to a chapter of the equally tempestuous love story of Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. The famous actress had been rejected for the role of Anne, and instead played an uncredited cameo part. She famously was present on set for shooting to ensure that her husband's relationship with his co-star remained a platonic one, and things came to a head when Bujold became tired of Elizabeth's presence, promising to give, and I quote, the bitch an acting lesson she'll never forget. Burton's daughter Kate was also given a cameo role, and Elizabeth Taylor wore the famous Le Peregrina pearl which Burton had purchased for her at Hever during the filming, briefly reuniting this historically significant jewel with Hever's painting of Mary I. The newly restored painting shows the pearl being worn by Queen Mary, who had been gifted the jewel by her husband, Philip of Spain. Taylor even played a round of golf, in full costume, using Astor's clubs in the Winter Garden lawn. There is a famous scene where Anne Boleyn is watching the arrival of Henry VIII at Hever from her window, and the film used this sketch by Joseph Nash from 1839 for its inspiration. Hever's orchard was filled with Tudor tents to hold Henry's court, and the film producer Hal Wallace allowed Gavin Astor to keep one to serve tea from for visitors. There's a bit of movie magic at play here when Henry and Anne ride out into the Kentish Weald. The couple ride uphill towards Hever's church, but then magically appear in another location which is actually waterlocked, Faith's Walk, near to where the water maze is now located. In 2019 we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the film being shot by exhibiting two Oscar-winning dresses worn by Jean-Vierve Bujold. I even own a bit of the film's history myself. Here is a beautiful silk flag with Cardinal Wolsey's arms on it. You can see it here on film during a shot located at nearby Penshurst Place, which stood in for Henry's Greenwich Palace. The Astor family lend the production team this replica of a clock believed to have been gifted to Anne Boleyn by Henry VIII on their wedding day. You can see the clock on screen in the scene where Henry signs Anne's death warrant, and you can see it in person today on the mantelpiece in Hever's inner hall. Hever's next link to popular culture is the award-winning BBC series The Six Wives of Henry VIII from 1970, 
starring Keith Michel as the much-married monarch. For much of the 1970s, Hever Castle's long gallery housed the costumes from the series. The costumes were designed and created by John Bloomfield, who went on to win a BAFTA for the best costume in 1971. With a meagre budget, John Bloomfield spent three months researching Tudor clothes at the National Portrait Gallery, Windsor Castle and other properties that housed portraiture from the Tudor era. In total, Bloomfield created over 300 costumes using screen printing methods with paints and resins on the relatively cheap materials afforded to him. Much of the jewellery was fashioned from toilet chains and scrap metal. In 1979, the BBC filmed numerous scenes of their production of Shakespeare's Henry VIII at Hever Castle. Hever Castle's inner hall was used to depict the private apartment of Anne Boleyn's famous rival, Catherine of Aragon. Rather unfortunately, however, Claire Bloom, who played Catherine, was seated under Hever's portrait of Catherine's nephew, Philip of Spain, as king. This scene was set in 1529, when Philip was only two years old. The Astor Wing exterior was also used to depict street scenes of London during Anne Boleyn's coronation. Michael Winner's remake of the classic 1945 film The Wicked Lady was screened at the 1983 Cannes Film Festival. Some of the film had been shot at Hever. The Gainsborough melodrama starred Faye Dunaway, Alan Bates and John Gielgud. Dunaway famously received a Razzle nomination for Worst Actress in her role in the film. A bedroom in the Astor Wing was used as Dunaway's boudoir, and various woodland scenes were filmed in the castle grounds. In 1984, Eric Morecambe and Tom Baker starred in a film adaptation of The Passionate Pilgrim. It was Eric Morecambe's last film. The whole film was shot at Hever Castle, and it also made extensive use of the Italianate gardens and parkland. The first televised adaptation of E.F. Benson's celebrated Map and Lucia novels used Hever Castle as the ancestral home of a fictional character, the Duchess of Sheffield, in 1984. The drama, which charted the social rivalry of two women during the 1930s, was set in the fictional town of Tilling, based upon Benson's hometown of Rye. Hever Castle's exterior was used, as well as the courtyard and the Great Hall. The series starred Geraldine McEwan, Prunella Scales and Nigel Hawthorne. It is one of the only television programmes that show the castle's ancient portcullis in operation. In 1986, Trevor Nunn's film Lady Jane made extensive use of Hever Castle as a filming location. It starred Helena Bonham Carter and Carrie Elwes. Although the castle exterior was used for promotional purposes on the film's official poster, it was only the castle interiors that were used on screen. You can see Heber Castle's stunning long gallery here, where Jane Grey visits the Lady Mary at Richmond Palace. The so-called Henry VIII bedchamber was used for Jane and Guilford Dudley's wedding night. You can see Carrie Elwes asleep in Henry's bed, and Helena Bottom Carter looking out of the same window that jean vive Bujold looked out of in Anne of the Thousand Days. The River Eden was used for the punting scene during the couple's honeymoon. You can see the bridge over the river in the background. Here, the Great Hall is being used as a throne room in the Tower of London. This is where Jane decides to send the Duke of Northumberland to defend her throne. It is also in the Great Hall that Queen Jane receives Eustace Chapuis, the Spanish ambassador, and where her shilling is delivered for her inspection. The linen fold panelling that now adorns the south wall of the Great Hall was actually copied in resin by the production company who required a heavily panelled chamber. The rogue panelling remains on display to this day as a silent, almost indistinguishable piece of movie history. Henry VIII's bedchamber was used again as the royal apartments in the Tower of London. The last scene showing Hever is back in the Great Hall, where the throne room has now become Queen Mary's. Jane visits her to plead for mercy. 
There were some deleted scenes from the film shot at Hever that you can see in these pictures. The scene where guards arrested Jane from the council chamber originally was extended into a scene in Hever's long gallery. There is also a scene where Mary shows Jane a portrait of her intended for Philip of Spain that was shot in Hever's Aster Wing. Carrie Elwes was back at Hever the next summer to film some shots from the 1987 film The Princess Bride. Based on William Goldman's iconic book, Hever's woodland was used for many scenes and the Great Lake, which was hand-dug for William Wardorf Astor back in 1903 by 800 men over two years, was used for this scene, where a great ship casts off to meet the shrieking eels. A relatively unknown film, God's Outlaw from 1986, was the first feature film to acknowledge and explore Anne Boleyn's role as a catalyst in the Henrican Reformation. Charting her rise to power through the use of the then heretical works of William Tyndale, Anne Boleyn was played by the actress Una Kirsch, and Keith Barron played Henry VIII. Hever Castle and its extensive gardens were used as the courting grounds of the famous couple and acted as the backdrop to Anne's radical religious learning. The 1991 film King Ralph was a small box office hit and starred John Goodman, Peter O'Toole and John Hurt. Hever Castle's sumptuous Astor Wing, now a luxury bed and breakfast, stood in for the illustrious private royal apartments of Windsor Castle. Perhaps the most surprising film to be shot at Hever was the first instalment of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, The Phantom Menace in 1999, which used the Italianate loggia in Hever Castle's gardens as a fantasy scene where Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson land from a sinking battle droid which founders into Hever's lake. The scene used heavily CGI creating a fantasy land in the style of the loggia. The BBC filmed a partly improvised version of Philippa Gregory's The Other Berlin Girl in 2003. Starring Jodie May as Anne Boleyn, Hever Castle's exterior was used for a scene during Anne's supposed banishment to Hever, following her very much fictional marriage to Henry Percy. In 2008, Inkheart, a fantasy adventure film starring Brendan Fraser and Helen Mirren, was shot at Hever Castle. Hever's Italianate loggia was used as Helen Mirren's character's home in Italy, with the heavy use of CGI. The Italian gardens were also used in numerous scenes. Dr David Starkey shot his series Henry VIII The Mind of a Tyrant at Hever in 2009. Here you can see the Queen's Chamber. Starkey had also filmed his documentary of the Six Wives at Hever in 2001. In 2014, Susanna Lipscomb's docudrama, Henry and Anne, The Lovers Who Changed History, was partly filmed at Hever. You can see the couple running through the gardens, and their steamy courtship was filmed in Henry's bedroom. The programme also features a fantastic look at Anne's Book of Hours, in which she has written Le Temps Viendre, or The Time Will Come. You can see two of Anne's inscribed and signed books on permanent display at Hever Castle today. In 2015, the Antiques Road Trip stopped off at Hever Castle to say hello to Ian Smith, one of Hever's finest guides. Ian showed off the courtyard, the stunning inner hall, and then Anne Boleyn's bedroom for another look at one of Anne's books. In 2016, it was Lucy Worsley who told the story of the six wives. She dressed up as a servant and observed the history as it happened. Worsley took audiences into the heart of the Berlin's home. Worsley was also back in 2019 to tell the story of a Tudor Christmas, and some of the Heber stewards joined her, dressed up as courtiers and Anne Boleyn. Worsley was dressed up too, as Henry himself. There have been many more television programmes and movies shot at Hever, and no doubt countless more to come. Hever's film history is almost as rich as the history that brings us to visit again and again. Hopefully, when you visit, you'll be able to spot some of the locations where some of these iconic films were shot, and walk not only in the footsteps of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII, but of movie stars too.